Hey there, this is Jennifer with NorthwestStamper.com and I'm back to share with you a fun Valentine's card idea using some of my new favorite items from the uh, Stampin' Up's Occasions catalog that just came out in January here. Um, this card actually all started because of this butterfly. Uh, it was an idea that I had seen by a fellow demonstrator named Kirstine Gill, which I just absolutely loved because it showed the idea of taking this Bloom and Heart um, die cut that's out of the Bloom and Heart Thin Let's Die and being able to turn it into a really cute butterfly. So I took her idea, I changed it up a little bit, and then I just put it onto this really cute card. And that's what I wanted to show you today. Now if you're playing along at home, here's what you're going to need. You're going to need the fine tip glue pen. You're going to need some tape runner. Um, I used this Bloom and Love uh, stamp set. Some crumb cake ink. And then I used Rose Red and Early Espresso Marker. Wink of Stella. And then here is the papers that you're going to need. You're going to need a scrap of paper to make your heart that's very vanilla, that's four inches by four inches. You're going to need a crumb cake card base that is eight and a half by four and a quarter, scored at four and a quarter. You'll need another piece of very vanilla that is two and seven eighths by four. And then a piece of this Love Blossoms designer paper that's in the six by six stack that is one inch by four inch. So once you have all these pieces, oh, and you'll need some snips too. Once you have all these pieces, then we can get started. So first I will show you how I um, die cut out this and the easy way to get it out of the die. And then we'll come back and do the rest of the card. So you're gonna start by using the Bloom and Heart Thinlet and you're gonna cut it out of very vanilla cardstock. Now I'm cutting it out using my Big Shot here. Um, this is the magnetic, or the precision plate on the magnetic platform. The precision plate being a flat piece of metal, I find that it does a lot better at getting um, everything fully cut than just using the magnetic. Um, but it will if you use it on the magnetic platform. It will it is a tighter fit, so it might warp your plates more. So you might want to go ahead and use, try it with your multi-purpose platform and maybe just run it back and forth a couple times. Even with this, I still run it forward and back um, once or twice. So I'm gonna do that real quick. Okay, so I've cut out the heart. I'm dropping things. But this is where if you have the Big Shot die brush, it's really handy. Because uh, you can just pop out your heart from here. Um, sometimes it'll pop all the way out. You can pull it all the way out or you can leave it in the die. If it doesn't come all the way out um, or if parts of it get stuck, just set it on here. You can kind of run across to get the little pieces out. And it should pop it out if it's starting to get all your little pieces because they're poking through the metal. But I don't ever expect it to get all of them because there's so much metal here. But instead, if you hold it up, you can kind of push and you can see that it's bending out from here already. So it just pops it right off for me. And any part that didn't quite get it, just run your brush and it'll pop out. And then you can just take your little die here and run. Now this one's really delicate, so you kind of have to be a little bit gentler. I kind of try to get as much as I can with it while it's still in the die. Um, and then anything else here, you just kind of go gentle. And once I get pretty close, then I usually just pop off the last couple pieces with my fingers, just because I don't want to tear any of the delicate lacy bits. But see, I've already done, that's did so much of the work for me that now I'm done. So you can just set this aside. And then from here, we'll be using the butterfly die to cut this out. Now, before I kind of move on to that, I will also show that these, the die has these little flowers and they line up really nicely behind the flowers on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out a couple with the, um, oh, the Blushing Bride Glimmer Paper because it's just so pretty. So I'm gonna cut a couple of those out and then we're gonna do the same thing to pop it out. Okay, so when I cut these out, my big one, it's the nice thing about the glimmer papers, the bigger dies, there's two sizes of flowers in that, in that um, Bloom and Hearts Thinlet set. The big ones just actually popped out. Um, there are some little pieces, so I might just sort of run it on here. Sorry to shake the table. Just sort of to pop out any little bits. But you'll see the little one didn't come out very well. And I could sit there and poke, but it's just as easy sometimes to either run it on here or usually with these sort of hold it up and it just helps pop it right out. 
So if you already have this at your table, just hold these upright and run the brush in the air and just sort of push. I'm trying to see if I can, there. Um, and it'll just pop right out. So now that we have those pieces, we'll go ahead and cut our butterfly and do the rest of the card. Okay, so now you have your heart die cut and you have some of these flowers. And I'm sorry, I totally forgot about telling you you needed the um, Blushing Bride glimmer paper as well. So I'm gonna use two of the large and two of the small on this particular card. We'll set them aside for now. Now, here's where the magic comes in. So I have this die from the Butterflies Thinlets. And if you're confused, this is the set. It's actually called Butterflies Thinlets. Whoops. And it is the set that has the larger um, intricate die um, and the smaller intricate die. And then this sort of plain middle one. Now the cool thing is though, is that when you line it up, you can actually just fit that butterfly on this heart. So I just set it down on here, lined it up, making sure my ridge is pointed down so that it will actually cut my paper. That would be helpful. So I'm gonna go through and we're gonna die cut this um, the Bloomin' Heart. Once you have this out, so it just pops right out and you have your little delicate butterfly. You're gonna also want to take a piece of scrap crumb cake and we're gonna cut out a second butterfly. So same butterfly, just now in a different color of cardstock. Okay, we have our die cut um, solid butterfly. We have our die cut lacy butterfly. And then we have our little um, flowers. Now the thing that's neat about the Bloomin' Heart um, if you look at it really closely is you'll notice that there are outlines of flowers as well as solid flowers. Um, maybe I should have done this and shown you this before, but um, these bigger flowers can actually line up on the solids. But even cooler to me is that the flowers actually fit behind the outline. So that's how I'm getting these little um, sparkly flowers behind. So what you're going to do is you'll look on here and there you'll kind of see there's a little center point in each of those. That's what I'm going to go through with my fine tip glue pen. And we're just going to add a little bit of glue um, in each of those spots. So I'll do one here. Now because these flowers are similarly shaped you really just want to add a little bit there and then I just for fun went up kind of just a little bit off but you don't really need to do too much. So I added one then I flipped it over so that I could line up my sparkly flower. And there's some directions that fit a little bit better than others. And then just press and hold it for a second. The fine tip glue pen, um, the glue that's in here is a little bit thinner. It holds really great, um, but it does um, take just a second to really grip on. So then once I've done that, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do the rest of the flower. So each one I just sort of went through, added my glue, um, and then I flipped it over on top of my bigger flower and lined it up. Now you'll find that these ones that are close to the edge, they go off the edge. So now you're losing that shape of the butterfly, but that's okay. That's what you want. So just go ahead, stick these down and then just finish out for your last two. So we're going to add um, a little one here and we're going to add a little one here. So just glue them down. And depending on where you place your butterfly die, they're each gonna, each one's gonna be a little bit different. But I'll go ahead and finish adding these and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, now once you have all of the flowers on how you like them, flip the whole thing over. And now this is why, especially we're using the fine tip glue pen. You're gonna go over the whole um, butterfly, this whole thing. So including where you've added flowers, but especially all the places that you haven't. And we are just going to add glue so that we can glue it onto this crumb cake, one that we cut out. That's why we cut out a second one that's the same shape and the same size because it's going to be our guide and it's also going to help give us that contrast so we can really see how cool this lace looks in butterfly form. Because when you do cut out your butterfly, you'll notice that sometimes it's a little bit hard in places to tell that it's a butterfly because, you know, you cut off and part of it's fallen and You'll see what I mean. It just makes sense. So, um, I just liked the contrast. I actually tried it on tone on tone. So I did the vanilla 
um, butterfly layered on top of a solid vanilla butterfly, which is really pretty in person, but I just thought it was just a little bit um, not as striking, so I liked it better this way. So I've gone ahead, added that glue, and I'm going to try to put my glue pen away, and it's jerking all around on me. There we go. So you just take this and line it up as best you can on your butterfly. Now here's the one nice thing about it being a little bit slidey of a glue at first is you can set it down and sort of adjust your pieces. So adjust it so all the vanilla parts are going where they're supposed to be and don't worry about the fact that your flowers are hanging over. Now I usually get it about there then I'll turn it over and press. That gives me a little bit more um, control. So once you have it down and about how you like, that's when you're going to take your snips and we're just going to trim off those extra parts where the flowers are hanging over. That's why it's nice. And then if any of your vanilla wasn't exactly where it needed to be, you can always do your trimming now too. Um, so now I can use this darker butterfly as my guide to do my cutting. I can just pop that up. And now my flower fits along the side of my butterfly. So now I'm just going to go through and do that for the rest of these flowers. Um, the nice thing is you're not doing too many flowers, so it doesn't actually take too long. The hardest ones are when you get sort of into these corners. I find it's easiest to start on one side, trim off some, and then you can go at it from the other direction uh, and then finish it out. That way you don't have to try really getting it all in there. And if you get it kind of close, you can always come back in and clean it up. So there is our butterfly. What do you think? Isn't it cute? Now to finish out our card, this is where we're taking that four and a quarter. Now it's four and a quarter by four and a quarter card base. And I am going to score it flat because it just makes it easier to deal with when it sits flat. And I always do that. I start from my bone folder. I start from the middle and go to one side take my bone folder and go to the other side so it doesn't twist my paper. And then for each of these, I just wanted to add a little bit of distressing. So I took my crumb cake ink pad and a sponge dauber. I have one per color. And I just, oh, I need to do this on the other hand. I'm apparently not an ambi sponger. And we'll just go around with your sponge dauber. I always like to hold my paper wide so that it won't flop around on me too much. But I'm being a little bit generous. For me, this is generous with my sponging. I love the look of sponging, but I'm not the person who goes halfway into the paper to do their sponging. So I'm just going to finish this up. Try to do it really quickly. Nice thing is it doesn't have to. Sponging is cool and doesn't take very long. And when you use these sponge daubers, it's not messy either, which is nice. So I have my vanilla. And then this is, like I said, from the Love Blossoms pattern paper. And you may think this paper is so busy you don't need to add um, the pattern, but you'll see that there's definitely a big difference between that and that, at least when you're up close. It really does make a difference. So I tend to sponge, even when you think you're not going to notice it, I'll still sponge it anyway, just so it kind of blends in and fits with the rest of the card. So with that, we can... Um, glue this down, but actually before I glue this down, what I always tell my stampers in class, always stamp first before you glue. I almost got cut off by my own excitement here. So the reason why is if I stamp and I mess it up, I can always flip it over and try again. So I am taking the Bloom and Love stamp set and we're using this one that's the little heart, it's in the air for love that's in the air. Uh, but I figured it kind of went well with my butterfly. So I'm just using my markers. I'm coloring straight on photopolymer. Now you may find when you try to color straight on photopolymer, um, it bubbles up. It doesn't work as well at first. Um, and I find that happens when I'm using markers on a brand new photopolymer uh, stamp. Uh, I don't know what it is when it's very brand new. It just does not take ink from a marker very well for me. So what I always do is I will actually stamp this with a light color of ink on scrap paper. It kind of primes it so that after I do that, I find that it does a whole lot better in taking my ink. So I've inked it up. I'll still do huffing like we normally do. So you go, just breathe on it like you're fogging a mirror. And then we'll stamp. And it looks cute. Now, um, one thing here, 
uh, is that if it's not exactly perfect, don't worry, we're going to do something in just a minute that makes it look perfect no matter what. So I am just putting some tape runner on here. So we're going to add it to the front of the card. Now, when I first did this card, I did it all done and I opened it up and it flopped open the wrong way. Very sad. So this time, check which way it opens and we will just glue these down. So there should be a little gap. So just do even spacing on one side, then come to the other and do about even spacing on the other. And then I just took my butterfly here and we are going to add some Stampin' Dimensionals. Seriously, cannot live without these things. You never can have too many. So I'm probably doing a little bit of overkill, but I just like everything to not have sagging points. So we'll just pop a few on, pop it onto the card. But wait, there's more. Have you tried the Wink of Stella? This stuff is super duper amazing. This is the clear. They also comes in gold through Stampin' Up. Um, and it is your glitter brush. It's like an aqua pen, only it does glitter that dries quickly and is not messy. I know, amazing, amazing stuff. So all I'm gonna do is paint it on here. Now, because it's sort of liquid and we're, we used markers, which were dye-based, it actually kind of smears your ink around just a little bit. So if you had a place where it didn't exactly cover as much as you want, when you do this, it ends up pushing the ink around to cover it. So that's why I was saying you don't have to worry too much. And so when you're done with that, you end up with this cute shiny heart with the cute shiny flowers on this really pretty Valentine's card. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it gave you some fun ideas or some new thoughts for how you might use something you have at home. If you don't have something I used and you want to use it, because you totally should, um, feel free to stop by my online store. It's just nwstamper.com shop and you'll be able to shop there. I'll also have the links um, to use this, uh, to all the items um, in a blog post up on my blog as well. Um, and I have most of the links down below. So if you have any questions, leave me a comment, send me an email, and I'd be glad to help. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, and I will be back with more soon. So make sure you're also subscribed to the channel um, here, and you'll be the first to hear when the newest stuff comes out. Thanks so much, and have a great day.